my name is Maxim, which you probably can which you probably can't probably can't call my surname, but I'll keep it short. Uh, so I'm here to talk about Ramtajs. Has anyone used Ramtajs? Good. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be embarrassed with list that. <laughs> okay, so a bit about me. I work for Play to Lead. Uh, we do like an audience engagement, making it fun for you to feel servicing with us and get your orders for that. And I'm here as part of uh, JFDI, which is that lovely frog. That's a, an uh, accelerator program. And we're here for three months and then going back to Australia. Um, so if you want to follow my weird thoughts, you can find me on Twitter, which you probably can't get this, uh, spell this properly, but I'll share the slide link with you later. Uh, so I'll start with what I'm not. I'm not a functional programmer. Those people are way smarter than me. I hate math. I had like C at math all my all the journey from university and school, and I'm not really an expert in random. So by setting the context, that's pretty much how I look when I discover Ramda. I have barely some idea what I'm doing, and the reason I'm giving this talk is because I wanted to know more about Ramda. So it kind of forces you to learn about stuff you're gonna talk about. So you can pretend that you know something. <laughs> Uh, so, like, when you look at RAMDA interfaces, the first question you might ask, like, what the heck is the difference? It looks very similar to underscore low dash, uh, and for those people who didn't use underscore, that's how it looks like. So if you want, if you have a set of tasks and you want to filter the tasks which are not complete, you just use this function and you pass it the list of tasks and you pass it the filter to apply. So that's how underscore low dash does this. And that's how Ramp does it. So at this point, you probably will be like, huh? Like, they're just introducing a new interface for you for no reason. And that's where the functional programmers, the proper people, would probably go into theory about the functional composition and query and explain all the stuff to you, which I can't because I have no idea what I'm talking about. So in GFTI, we just do it. Hopefully, I'm not going to end up like this. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. Okay, so basically there's two simple concepts which Ramda relies on and what Ramda brings to you. The first concept is called carrying and it has nothing to do with the uh, nice and tasty curry. <laughs> uh, it has to do with the fact that you can uh, you can have a function, so it's... Is it clear? Oh, well, why is it all shifted in the wrong direction? So, uh, ah, sorry for that. Beyond left and can right. anyone see it okay? Everyone can see it okay? Okay. And zoom. I don't zoom. It's just left adjusted. Okay, anyway, so I'll try to keep it right adjusted. So if you have a function which accepts x and y, so let's say I have a function and, and accepts x and y, and then this function returns to x plus y. And that's ES. Six index. So if someone is confused by this, then it's the same as uh, old JavaScript. This graph return x plus y. That's the uh, old way. Basically, I'm just passing two branches and connecting uh, them together. So if you want to use this function somewhere, you just call a one plus two, and that should be well, and that should be equal three, right? And if I did not I think that would work. Yeah, okay. So, so this is Node.js, right? Yeah, this is Node.js. There will be no material parts here. <laughs> okay, so what carry allows us to do is if we just apply this function carry, and this is not actually underscore. I'm, as you can see, I'm pretending here that it's underscore so that it's kind of easier to read. So if I apply carry on this and then I save it, it's actually going to be exactly the same result, but what carrying allows us to do is pass not all parameters at the same time. So we can say we have a function which adds one, and then this function is not executed at this stage. Then we can say we want to add one to two, and we're going to get the same result as three. So if it works correctly, yep. Uh, 
So you might be wondering, like, why the hell is it useful? Why do I want to pass multiple parameters, not every parameter at the same time? The reason is uh, that gives you a reusability of your functions. So if, if you have a simple way um, to add one, so you don't write everywhere plus one. You don't do one plus two, you don't do two plus three. You define a higher level abstraction for this, uh, which allows you to speak in your specific domain language. Is anyone lost at this moment? And I know that's probably an audience which is not going to tell me about this, so uh, I'm going to be like, what does come up to So, is anything, anything confusing at this stage, or not yet? Can you get to the last way, yeah? Okay, so... Um, now that you've got the function, add one. Yes. So, see, you have a function which accepts two parameters. Usually, when you call this function, you need to pass all parameters. You need to pass one and two, right? Uh, while here, what you can do with the carrying, you call it with one argument, and you didn't pass the second argument yet. You're passing it way later, uh -huh. which means you're creating a, a, a language for your system, which defined in your terms, in terms of, of your specific domain. So, like add one is probably uh, a very weird example, but if we do something like imagine you have a game and you have a way to increase the level of a user. So you do something like this, you do like increase level, and then you just say the increase level of the, that's probably not gonna work, but of the user, uh, user level. Which might be in completely separate parts of your code. It's not necessarily need to be in the same place. So you pass this as a function which increases the level somewhere else, and then you don't worry about how many how do you increase the level itself? Did I just confuse everyone completely? <laughs> so, uh, the main thing is for code readability to be really easy because the name of the function is more well defined to the domain, is it? Yes, yeah. So, instead of speaking in primitives like plus, minus, multiply, you're speaking in the higher language, which allows you to reason about your program easier. Okay? I think your plus one example is so you should use a different one because it's just increment, right? It's already existing there. So as you said, maybe you could use something where to the power of and, and whatever more complicated, not, not normal. Yeah, so you can have that, a that more clear why. Yeah, yeah, okay. Times three plus one minus three. Yeah, exactly. Whatever complicated formula there is that you have to Yes, so I didn't want to introduce the composition, that's why I did it simply. But let's say it's a power actually that, that is a good idea. Uh, if only I know how to do it. As I said, I'm horrible at math, so... <laughs> so that's multiplication, right? The power would be, we'll just multiply this uh, gazillion of times. So I'll do something stupid and I just do x by x. How do you power again? <laughs> x by x is, is pretty good, I would say. Yeah. But that, that, that would be limited to specific... That's great. But the hat, right? Yeah. Uh, with the hat? Yeah, the Okay. See, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, let's presume this is a power function. Um, so then we have a double function, which then well, then just takes just takes the power of two. And the tricky thing is we need to flip them. And the reason is we're only passing one. So. You're passing the thing that changes as last value, because then you can compose. Oh, not necessarily saying that. <laughs> so, see the x is the value that we making uh, that we put put the operation called that we powering. <laughs> so instead of doing this, we'll just flip those around. This function will pretty much double it, and uh, instead of instead of using power two, you just say, okay, I want to see what's double of 3 is going to look like, and if I did correctly, it's going to give me 9. And I didn't do it correctly. And, and the carrot is a bit wise, so... Yeah, it's math don't, don't, don't trust, <laughs> don't trust me in the power thing. I think there's this function. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the one, yeah? Uh, so, actually what I can do is I can just return this 
and then flip the arguments. That's going to be a bit advanced, but. I doubt it's going to work. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. So, <laughs> so basically, we flip the, it did the same thing that I did just now. It switches the arguments so that you can pass the argument which changes as the last argument. Okay? Does it make more sense now or, or it's still confusing? So, uh, you can have in uh, so the So, if, like if, if you give uh, 3 in PAL, should it equal to 27 now? Uh, yes. So, that probably won't be called double anymore, right? No, it's triple or whatever. But that will be 27. Q here. Yeah. Double Q, whatever. Yeah. No, that's not Q. Okay, whatever. Q will be 2. Q. Right? I, I wish you know how to uh, type Q here. Yeah? <laughs> okay, here you go. Make sense? Who got this now? No one got it. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, so uh, that's basically the whole, the biggest difference between Ramda and Lodash and underscore is that all the Ramda functions, they all carry the domain stream. Which means they don't force you to pass the arguments to them. And if we go back to the slides, now you might be able to spot the difference. See, in the underscore, uh, we need to pass the tasks here. In Ramda, there's no data. No data at all, and the data might be passed like hundreds of lines later. Your behavior is completely separated from the data you pass, which makes it way easier to reason about the state, uh, the, the behavior of the system, because it's not coupled with the state. And oh, what cha what happens when this change this variable, and what happens when change this variable? We have input coming in, output coming out. Simple as that, and behavior in the middle. Okay, so. The decoring kind of explained, maybe someone get it. <laughs> I'll quickly go through the functional composition thing. Uh, so basically, we have this flip thing, uh, the math ball thing. I'll just copy it because I'm too lazy to type it again. Uh, what the Ramda and underscore allows you to do, but because they don't have carrying, it doesn't really work. Uh, they allow me to do is pipe or compose, which is more math like. But uh, basically, if you want to take uh, an array and you want to make to coop all the values in the array, so if you write it in the in a normal JavaScript, you do some something like this: for i i while less than uh, length of array, I guess, and then you do i plus plus, and then you do all this funny stuff. Uh, Say I'll raise one, two, three. Even more. So if you want to do this the classic way without using underscore one, right? Uh, you would go and say r um, i equals r uh, math power three. Uh, I don't know which one which I think like that. And the power of three. So that's your classic approach. And the problem with this approach is that it's very fast, <laughs> but it's very hard to read. Because you have you have this four here, and then you have this stuff, and you're actually changing the state at the same time. So you can't uh, you can't easily say what's happening here when I go and mutate this array somewhere outside of uh, of this function. Uh, what from the allows you to do is that you just create uh, a map of array. So you, you, you take an array and you map it uh, with the Q. So basically the same way that underscore does it, but we are delaying uh, passing the service. So I'm going to pass the service now, but I'm going to show you in a second where we're going to delay it. Uh, so if I did everything correctly, then we will have what, one, six, and nine, I guess. One, eight, 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 e
Okay, so if I did not... Oh, I did, because I, I had the other version, so I actually... Like I cooked it, cooked it twice, yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, hopefully... 1827. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's stupid. Uh, Mocha is the test framework used here, and you can't use equal arrays. I don't know why, do ask me. Uh, so that allows us to map easily, right? So let's say now that we have four and five, I'll just make it slightly complicated. So we have four and five, say this is gonna not work anymore. Um, 64. No, no, I, I, I'm not I'm gonna, I don't know this <laughs> is. <laughs> what I want to show you is that instead of doing this here, I'm just gonna extract this so that uh, you can still see it. Uh, let's call it something like transform. Well, I got spelled obviously. Uh, you can actually do multiple things on it. And what I'm going to do is before I'm going to map it, I'm going to filter it. So instead of passing an array, I'm not going to pass an array. I'm just going to say I want to filter this and I want to remove everything which is over 4. And I don't know, this is just my logic is like this. <laughs> so I'm just going to create a function which just says is under 4 and I doubt I can use and this function accepts an element and it just returns to you is the element is less than 4 it's simple as that so the filter function then is just have this is under 4 and again I don't execute this function at this moment and I don't actually pass see this this is just the behavior there's no description here of what the data is Oops. Now it's just a weird error thing. Uh, so to actually make it call, I need to pass an array here. So what I did now is I essentially, without changing anything here, I made my function behave completely differently. And you can go on and you can say you want to cook it first, or maybe you want to then double it for whatever reason and we can compose behaviors like this uh, and I didn't define double so that's not going to work let's define the double thing so this will quadruple cook it and then double it and that looks right I think uh, it's, it, the numbers are getting too high so I can't tell uh, the reason why you would do this is because those uh, those functions they actually have a math theory behind them, and the math theory tells us some interesting stuff. Like instead of iterating on the array twice, which you often do, you can actually say that I want to cube it and then I want to double it with the composition inside. So that's probably why most people would like, what the fuck is happening? So, how many people get confused now? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna raise my hand. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's getting a bit, a bit harder to read, so you, you, I would usually uh, start separating this into, uh, I'm not sure what to call this, double cubed. <laughs> Yeah, no, like it's still working, but uh, I obviously didn't fix my tests. So. Let's double off this. Well, 64 and 729. Okay, the reason why you do this is you can start creating those functions. So you say I have like this double cube function. Imagine it's function in your domain. For example, you need to double cook your values every time the user gives you something. You need to double cook it and then pass it to some uh, to that place. Instead of writing this code where we're like, okay, so we have this uh, value here, and then we need to say value, what math, power, value by three, and then we we'll multiply by two. That's not doubling it, but we need to power it again, basically. Math, power, again. So that's the equivalent of this code. So which one behind you find easier to read. This 
or this. It's very quiet, so I don't <laughs> I think the first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, yes. yes. It's really hard line, right? Yes. So, uh, <laughs> it must be better. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's, let's make it complicated. Uh, uh, it's more nested. Uh, so. Can you tell me what this function does within uh, 10 oh. seconds? Oh, wait, I'm going to remove the comments, so that I'm going to not make it easy for you. Okay, now tell me what the function does. So first, first part was the. Can you quickly guess? It's not the admin user. Uh, yeah. See, you you're reading the whole thing. You're reading. If it's not admin user, then then what? Show them some memory to the user. Just that the user is not an admin, and if he is not an admin, don't show him the uh, the media that the only admin is able is supposed to see. Okay. Uh, what about this one? Because it's up many you it? Yes. So you're basically only showing the menu items that that person can is allowed to see because of his level, right? Uh huh. No, see, uh, see that's when it becomes. Uh, so, you, like, when you try try to read something like this, you need to read, you need to read this part. You need to read all this fluff around it, and that's the actual. This is the only two lines which matters in this code. It's this: if level is zero, then we return the items which doesn't have a parent, and if level is not zero, then we return the items which match the parent. Okay. So what I just said in English uh, can be also expressed. I'm just going to cheat because we're running a long time. Can be also expressed in my cheaty version, which I didn't finish. <laughs> uh, so ignoring the partial thing, that's just me not understanding how to use Rambler properly. We're checking that the level is zero, right? That's what I just said in English, and then we return items without parent. All return items for scientific parent. That's what the logic was. But to tell this from here, you need those things. You need this sneaky comments so that explain, okay, this is what we do, this is what we do here, this is what we do here, and this is what we do here. So the code is kind of self documenting itself. It's if. It's, it's just raising the abstraction level of what you're working on. You're not working on the primitive, I need to do the four thing here and I need to do plus one here. You're working in your domain uh, language. For example, see I call this at child level and I don't look at what this thing does. What I care is when I combine all this together, what I do is I, and I know compose is a bit weird. It's a math function, so it does everything in the opposite way. So you read from right, from right to left, not from left to right. This is the equivalent, basically, of filter uh, of at the child level. Then you pass the conditions, then you pass the items which you can pass here, uh, and then you the items will be filtered by parent, and then you pass the conditions, and you pass the items. And then you pass that instead of passing items here, you pass, pass this, and then you pass items here finally. So that's the equivalent of this line. If you want to write the document composition. I think I just know that everyone the brain, right? <laughs> <laughs> so my point was that by by raising the level of abstraction here. You don't need to uh, go down and see, oh, does this thing, does condition plus one. Whenever you need to add a child level to your menu item or your menu, they, and the project this copy pasted from is actually telescope. If you go to telescope, there's so much duplicate code they do of like, oh, I don't have a menu, we need to add a child level, which is going to do plus one. So don't give you plus one, you're using a function. 
which then allows you to change the behavior. If you need to now say that child level is not just plus one, it's plus 10, you just go to one place, you change one function, that's it. Okay, so I think it's, yes, I'm, I'm kind of on time, but not really. Uh, so if you are, I don't know, if when you are like, what the fuck is that? And you want to read people who actually understand the shit, uh, not me, then there's this guy, which is free. So you just click this link and I'll post the slides. That is very, very easy read. Uh, this guy is like, you don't have funny pictures. Um, and he explains the basics and the very advanced parts of, of functional programming in JavaScript. Uh, then there's Scott Harris, who created from the JS. And you can find his talks here. There's a bunch of them on, on the composition of functional programming. Way more theory than I can ever imagine. Yeah, it goes into all this, how you do this properly. Uh, and then if you want to see the demo of the person who knows who they're talking about. <laughs> and then I found, unfortunately, yesterday at night. So I wish I had it before. Uh, that's a guy who tried to do the same thing, but way better than me. So if you, if I got any of your interest, or you're like, what fuck is this functional programming thing, and you want to read more, here's what I read and I I think I tried to understand something, but I'm still kind of floating in, in every direction. Uh, any questions? <laughs> I just like figure people just like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> <laughs> so are you, are you using this uh, now in your yes. future well, applications? Uh, yes. So you, you refactoring all the code or you... Uh, no, we, we started using it from the beginning. Because uh, I started the application with, so you, you can pull in the underscore or you can pull Ramda uh, in instead of underscore. Um, and I pulled Ramda in, but I was not sure what heck I'm doing. And yeah, so that kind of forced me into learning it more, but I think I'm still like halfway there in, in, in understanding the basics of it. I think the issue is that uh, writing in this way versus the loop will be the depth of the cost thing, which is an issue for depth of what? When you change the command itself, yeah. you know, the cost thing itself will get very large. You mean the performance? Yeah. Uh, that is true. Function after function after function. Yeah, functional programming is generally yeah. slow. But because you are using a language that is optimized for it. No, like JavaScript is, yeah, just like if you think about JavaScript, it's not a pro, o, clo, um, it's not an object oriented language. It doesn't have classes. We're trying to do, do object oriented in JavaScript, but it's not what language was designed for. It was never designed to doing all P in it. And we are trying to piggyback it on top of it. Uh, but you're totally right. Uh, the performance benefits of writing in cursive style, where you just like iterating manually, is uh, definitely there. Uh, the problem is when you have state, you can't do parallel easily. As soon as we can do parallel, which hopefully is going to be when web worker is going to be implemented, so in, in I don't know a year hopefully we can use threads in our browser. Kind of threads means you can do parallel programming in JavaScript. And then when reliance on state is going to make it very, very difficult. Because you need to place logs everywhere and all this fun of functional programming in this state. Oh, sorry, object-oriented programming in state. Um, yeah, but like in reality, I didn't notice any performance degradation. It's so tiny that you just like, oh, whatever. And more functions, yeah. It, it's way faster if you write everything in one method, right? So if you don't have any functions, any classes, write everything in one giant method, it's going to be super fast. But good luck maintaining this, because it's very hard to understand the code which is just mingled in, in the more. And uh, one question is that how do you use it in the sense that how do you replace the score? Where do you write it? Ah, yeah, so uh, that's a good question. So. Uh, when I was refactoring this, I kind of, this is the notion of 
pure functions in functional programming, which are basically functions with no side effects. So you pass an input in a function, and you get an output exactly the same input passed in, you get exactly the same output every time. There's no difference. There's no if meteor user then will do something different. So to, to avoid this part, I just separate all this crap into a dark space. <laughs> and I call this, this function I don't test. So I just combine all the stuff that I need, including this meteor part, and I call this thing. And this thing can be tested without any realized meteor. This is, I took this code from meteor, uh, from, from a telescope, and I made this function completely irrelevant to, to uh, what's called, to meteor. And if you need to pass like items here as a meteor collection, uh, my keyboard that you just do this, you just do like meteor, uh, or oh, meteor, uh, I don't know, advanced, dot find, dot fetch. So you chunk all the parts which can change into one place. Because you don't want, like testing this is really hard. You need to create mock events, you need to create the display user, you need to make sure how this function works, all this crap. Uh, testing the function which doesn't actually have anything to do with meter, just playing JavaScript, it's logic. And you know, underscore, is, it's under the score of meter, right? So you do replace the underscore. Ah, uh, yeah, underscore is run there still. Oh, you can't see that. <laughs> oh, it's up there. Oh, okay. Let me see. It. So it's. Yeah, see it? It's not underscore, it's run there. This is our yeah. yeah, outside of. Yeah, it works the same way in browser. Uh, moreover, because your functions are pure, you can actually serialize this function and you can pass it over the wire to oh, anywhere. Server, server side. So yeah, it should be. If it's okay. Well, it's just JavaScript. There's no reliance on meteor. Meteor becomes part of your input. So all the meteor parts, you chunk them into the input, and everything else inside is pure JavaScript. Okay. So if you need to call to meteor, for example, you want to call an API somewhere within your logic, this is just a function that you pass into your logic function, like this pure function. Or maybe, maybe. Talk about it. So kind of yes. Yeah. On time, so but you can take it offline after. Okay. So. Just ask a quick question. Yeah. Okay, just just one point. I think um, thinking a functional paradigm actually has some advantages in terms of performance. So if you talk about underscore, um, they can actually optimize your. So let's let's talk about the iterator function, your for loops. They can actually optimize your for loop function because they assume that your function is of a certain type, and if it's of a certain type, you can do some pre-optimization, therefore your compiler can run it faster. So it's actually faster than native code. Uh, that's that's the ah, I, I don't know, know. That's cool. but it's just lower than like, uh, I mean, that depends on what function you're passing It's just lower than uh, functional languages that are used for functional languages. I think there's still a core stack thing. But the, the cost is tiny, you don't want much effect. You need uh, to build, you need to process a gazillion of data and display yeah. They have some, they have the, Cost optimization, which they, which they convert a set of calls into loops instead of yeah. 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 I just want to point out that there, there is actually yeah. an advantage because the, yeah. the library yeah. might optimize your code for you. I just wanted to ask, so if you compare this with, say, underscore or Lodash, yeah. which one is faster? Yeah. Uh, what was the optimization for Lodash? Uh, I think Lodash is faster. There are some uh, benchmarks which say that the Lodash yeah. is actually faster. I haven't tried it myself, but I've seen people doing it and they're saying it's faster. So if, you, if you're concerned with performance, not readability or modularability or reusability of your code, then definitely go Lodash. But you need to process a lot of data to see the difference. Okay. Thank you.